Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today I am going to rank every video game movie, at least the ones I've watched, from worst to best in my opinion. I mean, there are too many video game movies, so, so I'm just doing the ones that I've watched and I've wanted to do a video game movie ranking for a while now, but with four months off Borderlands, I still have space to do a ranking video for video game movies. Since I've wanted to do a video game movie ranking since before the Super Mario Bros. movie came out. And with Gran Turismo and Five Nights at Freddy's being out for a while now, I can include them in the ranking as well. This ranking does not include Ready Player One, Wreck-It Ralph, Free Guy, or Spy Kids 3D Game Over. I'm not counting the 22 Pokemon anime movies because not all of them are accessible, but I've only seen four of them, excluding the Mewtwo Strikes Back CGI remake, which I can confirm. So how this ranking is going to work is that I made a tier list with all the video game movies that I've watched. I have seen 22 in total and divided them into five tiers going up to a tier since there are no s tier video game movies yet but half of them fall under the d or f tiers so to start the ranking we have f tier video game movies with number 22 super mario brothers 1993 there may be a worse video game movie than Super Mario Bros. 1993 that I haven't seen yet, but among the ones I've seen, this one is the worst. You may be surprised to know that there was a Super Mario Bros. movie before the one that was released last year, and if you hadn't heard of this movie before, I wouldn't be surprised, as it is one of the worst video game movies ever made. And as a Nintendo fan, I can't defend it. The visual effects in this movie were just bad. While the Spy Kids movies are known to have terrible CGI, the visual effects are just horrible. I can't show you footage due to legal reasons, but look at this shot from the film where Mario falls into a portal. The CGI is just pure, downright, Horrible. I understand that this is a movie that came out in 1993, but the visual effects in it were just bad. Bowser in it is just pure nightmare fuel, and the set design is not accurate to the games. The film did end on a cliffhanger, but it failed so miserably at the box office that a sequel was never greenlit. If your children ever ask you about a Mario movie, do not show them this movie because Super Mario Brothers 1993 is a strong example of a video game that does not work in live action. One out of 10. Number 21, Ratchet and Clank. There are multiple reasons why I did not like the Ratchet and Clank movie. The story was a bit undercooked. The film versions of these characters were just unbearable to watch. Not to forget that the characters original to the film I couldn't get into and the humor in it was not funny at all. The only good things I have to say about the movie are that the animation quality was decent and the voices for Ratchet, Clank, Captain Quark and Dr. Nefarious reprise their roles in the movie. If Ratchet and Clank is ever adapted again, I'd see it being done by Sony Pictures Animation for Netflix. Only cause Ratchet and Clank did bomb the first time it was adapted for the big screen. And you know what was funny about this film? We were supposed to get a Sly Cooper movie from the exact same animators as the Ratchet and Clank movie. But unfortunately, Ratchet and Clank bombed in the box office. The Sly Cooper movie was never saw the light of day. And I didn't play the PS4 game that came out the same year as the Ratchet and Clank movie for a reason. One out of 10. Number 20, Doom Annihilation. I feel like the Doom games have had the worst luck 
when adapted into live action. Because we did have a film with Dwayne The Rock Johnson in it in like 2005, which wasn't game accurate, and we had Annihilation, which was the far worse than the first Doom movie. The visual effects make it look like a fan film, similar to how the visual effects in Madam Web are just the worst. And honestly, as awful as Madam Web was, I finally have an excuse to mock it for how bad the visual effects were. But back on topic, the action was terrible, so was the acting, and the plot was really difficult to get into. Doom Annihilation just feels like a movie that would air on the sci-fi channel, and I am not proud to have seen this. When will we ever, ever get a budget more accurate adaptation of Doom that's rated R? 1 out of 10. Number 19, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Having two video game movies, both subtitled Annihilation, makes it sound like a pure coincidence, but like the teacher in The Incredibles says, I think not. Mortal Kombat Annihilation does a terrible job at following the games. The acting is just the worst acting you would probably see in not just a video game movie, but any movie ever. The choreography is probably the worst out of any Mortal Kombat movie we've seen so far. And the CGI is worse than you think it is. I'm sorry to say this, if you are a diehard fan of Mortal Kombat, Annihilation is just one I don't recommend watching. And at least the 2021 reboot was more faithful. 2 out of 10. Number 18, Monster Hunter. I bet a lot of people didn't know there was a Monster Hunter movie, but to be honest, it wasn't that good. The characters have little to no development at all. The editing is just awful, so is the writing, and the premise for a Monster Hunter movie was uninteresting. The only good thing I can say about this movie is the monsters look good visually. Monster Hunter is just a movie I don't recommend to anyone at all, and I feel like the games are better than whatever this movie was. 3 out of 10. Number 17, Prince of Persia. The Sands of Time. I probably bet a few people didn't know that that Prince of Persia had a movie either, but it does. I had no idea this movie even existed until last year. I did watch this movie recently for opinion purposes, and I did not like this movie at all. Disney is no stranger when it comes to adapting books into live action movies, which they have done with A Wrinkle in Time before which wasn't even a good film either, but Disney adapting a video game into a live action movie for the first time just didn't work at all. The film has cheesy humour in it, which doesn't land with me, and I think the plot is generic and messy, not knowing what it wants to be, especially for a Prince of Persia movie. Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, is one of those generic live action Disney movies besides John Carter that I think anyone can forget about within a short span of watching. And this film shows that I was left with a bad taste in my mouth when it came to the Prince of Persia series. Three out of 10. Now that's all the F tier video game movies covered, now we're moving on to the D tier video game movies with number 16, Assassin's Creed. The only reason this film was not in F tier alongside others is that it's kind of faithful to the games, but the issues in this film are noticeable. The film lacks the visuals you may come to expect from an Assassin's Creed game. The film goes back and forth between modern day and the past, which makes the story hard to follow, which is one of the reasons the Eternals from 2021 is my least favourite MCU movie. The film focused on an original character who was unlikable because people would probably expect an Assassin's Creed movie to focus on Altier or Ezio, but no. The film 
focused on an original character. While more all Combat 2021 did do this as well. At least that film checked every box on how to do it right. Assassin's Creed just couldn't get there. Assassin's Creed was a messy movie, but it's not the worst video game movie. I just think it would have been better if it fell in line with the source material. 4 out of 10. Number 15, Doom 2005. 2005 was a mediocre year in cinema, but Doom 2005 was not exempt from that. The film's aesthetic wasn't faithful to the games, and that's one thing I don't like about this movie. The acting wasn't good, even though I like The Rock in the films he is in, but I think Doom 2005 is one of the worst films he's been in so far. It's easy to lose track of the action sequences in it, and the plot is just unoriginal. Doom Guy was in the movie, but he doesn't wear his green armor from the games, but swaps it out for military uniform. Like, what? How is this even a Doom movie? But yeah, Doom 2005 wasn't a good movie, but it's not an offensively bad movie like others. Four out of 10. Number 14. Mortal Kombat 1995. I mean, this movie was better than Annihilation, but it isn't a good movie either. First, the movie is PG-13, which is a red flag even for the Mortal Kombat series, which is known to have gory and brutal violence, but this film is so poorly choreographed that the charm of the Mortal Kombat games just isn't there. The CGI has poorly aged since the movie released. Take a look at this image of Reptile from the film, and you can tell that, that this awful CGI does not hold up today, since the character is poorly textured. The film does have comedy in it, but it doesn't hit with me. The story in the movie is pretty mid. The poor acting and writing make the movie a bit harder to watch, and I wouldn't consider Mortal Kombat 1995 a good movie, but at least it was a bit better than Mortal Kombat Annihilation. 4 out of 10. Number 13, Uncharted. If I'm being honest about the Uncharted movie, it was a mix of wrong and right. First, I didn't like the casting decisions that this movie went with, and Tom Holland was not the right actor for Nathan Drake. But with Avi Arad producing this movie, he just had to persuade the people making it to include Tom Holland in the cast. And I think Nathan Fillion, or even Mark Wahlberg, would have been a better casting choice for Nathan Drake, which Mark Wahlberg already is in the movie. But I think these actors would have made a way better Nathan Drake. I don't have anything against Tom Holland personally, since I did enjoy him as Spider-Man. I just don't think he was the right pick for Nathan Drake. Another area where I think the Uncharted movie goes wrong is that the film heavily adapts Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, which I think was the wrong move. But was there anything good about this movie? Well, I didn't mind the action, but Tom Holland's cheesy dialogue does make some scenes a, a bit unwatchable. Uncharted was a mid-movie in my opinion, but not all the way terrible. 5 out of 10. Number 12, Five Nights at Freddy's. This film is more popular with the fans than the critics, but being an outsider for half of the Five Nights at Freddy's series, it was a mid-movie in my opinion. I'm sorry to anyone who enjoyed this movie, but I just thought it was mid. As a film that is marketed as a horror movie, it just doesn't work because the film isn't scary at all. The story is a mess because it's really hard to follow because the flashback scenes where Mike's brother gets abducted feel a bit repetitive and make it confusing for me. We barely got any jump scares in the movie, but the ones we did get are not scary at all, such as Balloon Boy and Mr. Cupcake 
which did have predictable jump scares in the whole film. The only thing I can say I liked about the movie was the animatronic designs and the set design. That was it for me. Five Nights at Freddy's is a mediocre horror movie with human characters I could not care about, a messy and hard to follow story, predictable jump scares, and the main four animatronics barely having screen time in the movie. And unfortunately, Five Nights at Freddy's did look promising from its trailers, but the final result was one of my most disappointing movies of 2023. But if a sequel is greenlit, can you make it scary please? But honestly, I don't think I will watch the sequels in cinemas only because of my experience with the first movie. 5 out of 10. I get that half of the video so far has been D tiers and F tiers, but I think it's time to move on from the video game movies I think suck or are mid, and let's get onto something that's actually okay. With the C tiers, with number 11, Warcraft. A lot of people say that this movie isn't good, but I think the Warcraft movie was actually okay. It's not a perfect movie, but the CGI in it is really good, especially on the characters that are not humans. The characters are well written, but I don't think the story is easy to understand. There is violence involving decapitation in the movie, but there isn't really any blood or gore within the film itself. And even if Warcraft had an undercooked plot, I still thought it was a fine movie. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves was more my type of film, but Warcraft was okay at least. Six out of 10. Number 10, The Angry Birds Movie. I know that the Angry Birds movie is hated by many, but honestly, the Angry Birds movie was actually okay, even with the little flaws it has. The animation in the film is colourful, especially the designs of each of the birds. The film had a great voice cast. The film does have a few adult jokes put into the mix. But the only area I think the film falls short is the story. The first half of the movie is just a series of events happening with no plot to follow until the pig stole the eggs from Bird Island. The movie had little story to deal with, but a majority of the story we did get was the final battle at Pig Island. I really liked the slingshot sequences in the final battle as well, but the Angry Birds movie may not be up there as the best video game movie because it played it a bit too safe, but it was actually an okay movie. 6 out of 10. Number 9, Tomb Raider 2018. To be honest, I've only seen the 2018 adaptation and not the ones from Angelina Jolie. But unlike the originals, Tomb Raider 2018 is based off the 2013 game. I feel like this version of Lara Croft was more grittier, which is better than her being cheesy, as I've been told from other versions of Lara Croft that Angelina Jolie's version is a bit cheesy compared to this version. But is the story good? Although I think it had a solid origin story for Lara Croft, it had a decent story, but it wasn't amazing. Tomb Raider 2018 was an alright movie, even if I've been hearing negative things about the originals. I think this is an acceptable adaptation for Lara Croft. 6 out of 10. We are now moving on to the more decent video game adaptations slowly moving away from the C-tier video game movies, but we're now moving on to the B-tier video game movies with number eight, Gran Turismo. I know that sports films and biopics aren't everybody's cup of tea, but Gran Turismo is a near decent movie. 
but since I did rate it a 6.8 out of 10 in my review, it falls as a C plus or a B minus. And honestly, I honestly didn't know how a Gran Turismo movie would work story-wise until the first trailer dropped, revealing that it was a biopic of Jan Mardenborough, making Gran Turismo a more unique video game movie because we've never had a biopic video game movie hybrid before. And I like how the film was shot on actual cars and not prop cars because it makes a racing movie more engaging to watch. The film had a decent cast, with David Harbour being the best addition to the cast that we have. And the only issues I have with this movie is how the biopic elements were handled. Portraying Martin Burr's crush in a different way compared to the real life counterpart and how historically inaccurate the movie is when it comes to product placement. The real life counterpart takes place in 2011 when the PS3 was the relevant platform and the film counterpart product places PS5s into the movie. I don't know why, but I feel like details like this make the film historically inaccurate. Kind of like that awful Madam Web movie from this year, which had a guy playing on a PSP, which didn't release until November of 2005 and the film was set in 2003. I may not be the biggest fan of Gran Turismo as a franchise personally, but I thought this film was okay, even with the few issues that the film has. 7 out of 10. Number 7, The Angry Birds Movie 2. Although this film did not perform well at the box office compared to the first movie due to the lack of marketing and the strong competition against movies like Toy Story 4, which was the billion dollar animated movie of summer of 2019, I feel that the sequel was better than the first one, but what did the sequel do better than the first? I feel like the first film had poor pacing when it came to the story, but although the sequel didn't have bad pacing, it definitely did the pacing better than the first movie. The animation in it is still great, like in the first movie, and the comedy is even funnier this time. The only issues I have with this movie are the kind of predictable plot and the poorly executed villain. The Angry Birds movie too is a decent movie overall, but I feel like that this is a more brain off kind of movie if you get what I'm saying. 7 out of 10. Number 6. Rampage. I'm personally more into robot fight movies. If you ignore the Michael Bay Transformers movies for one minute and focus on Bumblebee and Rise of the Beasts, but back to Rampage, I think it was a fairly enjoyable movie, unlike other movies on this list. I had no clue Rampage was adapted from a video game when it first released, but Rampage is a movie with a fair amount of action in there to keep me interested in the film. The movie had great visual effects and it may be cheesy at times when it comes to the comedy, but the writing between Dwayne The Rock Johnson's character and the gorilla is full of heart. And even with the undercock villains, Rampage was a, an enjoyable enough film to watch. Seven out of 10. Number 5, Mortal Kombat 2021. Finally, an R-rated Mortal Kombat movie. It's time to get that PG-13 rated junk in the trash because this was better than the 90s MK movies. I like the fresh ideas that this movie had, such as focusing on an, a new original character named Cole, who doesn't appear in the games, and I like the choreography in the movie as well. The visual effects are solid, and the only thing I can criticize about the movie is the quality of the set design. I don't know why, but a big weakness with this movie is how the set design feels like a theme park prop and not something realistic, such as the cobblestone walls in some of the scenes looking like something that you'd see while queuing 
for the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland and I hope that the upcoming Mortal Kombat 2 movie fixes some of these issues. Although I wasn't the biggest fan of the Mortal Kombat movies from the 90s, I think Mortal Kombat 2021 is the best adaptation in live action we've had from Mortal Kombat so far and I think it was the right move to go R-rated for the reboot. 7 out of 10. Number 4. Sonic the Hedgehog. Although the first trailer didn't sell me because of the old design, I had fun watching this movie. Although the film didn't get heavy on the Sonic the Hedgehog lore, apart from the beginning of the movie, I think the road trip premise was a fun enough premise. The human characters in the movie I couldn't really care for, apart from James Marsden's character due to the lack of involvement with the plot, but I feel like Sonic the Hedgehog 2 made characters like Rachel and Wade more likeable. Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik was probably the standout for me because he has the energy that Jim Carrey expressed in his previous roles such as The Grinch and The Mask while also blending it in with Dr. Robotnik's character from the games. And I also had fun with Ben Schwartz's portrayal of Sonic the Hedgehog as well. And even if we didn't really dive into any dedicated lore until the sequel, Sonic the Hedgehog was a fun watch, even if I think the sequel is better than the first. 7 out of 10. And finally, we have come to the A tier video game movies. The best of the best. My favourite of the three of the 22 on this list. With number three, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Like I just said, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is better than the first film for many reasons. Even though I think that the casting choice for Knuckles was a bit unexpected, since I did expect The Rock or John Cena to voice him, before Idris Elba was revealed to be the voice of Knuckles, but I think Idris Elba works as Knuckles, and I know the internet were hoping for Tom Holland to be picked at, for Tails. I don't think Tom Holland is an actor that would work with Tails, and thank God that Colleen O'Shaughnessy, who played Tails in the games, was the casting choice in the end. The film's premise did focus on the Chaos Emeralds in some way, but I didn't mind the execution. I feel like the wedding scenes in the movie didn't really need to be there because they didn't really do anything for the plot until Sonic opened up a ring portal. 8 out of 10. Number 2, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. I probably bet a few of you are wondering, BB-8, how was Detective Pikachu better than the Sonic movies. Well, I am a big Pokemon fan after all, and that is why I got more enjoyment out of this film. The film has a good cast, despite not being accurate to the games, such as Ryan Reynolds, Justice Smith, Catherine Newton, and Bill Nye. Not that one. The visual effects were really good in this movie, and I'm pleased that the Pokemon designs within the movie are faithful to the games. The only issue I have with this film is the lack of Pokemon battles. But overall, Pokemon Detective Pikachu is a film I consider the most important video game movie since it's the one that broke the curse. 8.3 out of 10. Number 1, The Super Mario Brothers Movie. The only video game movie to cross $1 billion in the box office so far. But this film is probably the best video game movie. I was optimistic towards Illumination making it due to their critical track record, but I think this is Illumination's best movie to date. I gave this a rewatch fairly recently, and my opinion has not changed since theatrical viewing. The animation is gorgeous, especially with the amount of easter eggs that are to point out. The film has a fun cast, including Jack Black, especially with the Peaches song, and Seth Rogen. But the only issue I do have with this movie is that the story 
isn't as fleshed out or complex compared to other animated movies like S Spider Verse, but the Super Mario Brothers movie is not a cinematic masterpiece, but it's still a fun movie to watch. 8.6 out of 10. So guys, what did you think of my video game movie ranking? And with the ranking complete, here is the complete tier list. It may take two years for me to do an updated ranking since 2024 has Borderlands and Sonic the Hedgehog 3. 2025 has Minecraft, Mortal Kombat 2, and Five Nights at Freddy's 2. And 2026 has the untitled sequel to the Super Mario Bros. movie. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8 out.